There you go. Um, so basically, we're going to use Tata Cyber like the communication to narrow down threats because I know there's a lot of different things out there in the wild, so it's really hard to know where to focus on. So we're basically going to help walk you to, through that um, and how to focus your time and efforts to, to basically get the most value out of what you're doing uh, when looking at you know 600 plus techniques. Uh, and then lastly, I'm going to help you also understand that the, the MITRE attack framework doesn't have everything, so you'll need to also expand, and then we provide the means to do that for free as well. Um, so basically, what is threat informed defense is basically understanding adversaries, uh, and, and from that knowledge gain, use that to better your defenses. That's basically all, all is, it, is it. So you, you want to make sure that you understand adversaries. Um, and by doing so, you can, you can understand also how your, ad, your, your defenses will be affected by those. Um, so it's basically, it's a back and forth, uh, understand the threat, understand your defenses, understand how the threat impacts your defenses, and how, understand how your defense can, uh, can be improved on, 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 on that information. Um, so it also helps you narrow down your scope of things you need to worry about, because like I mentioned, attack has a bunch of things. Uh, and in general, the, the, the threat landscape, um, however you want to call it, it has a lot of different attacks, attack vectors, right? So uh, basically, you want to narrow down all the different things out there and focus on the, on the, on the things that are, are actually going to be impactful for you. Um, and a, a way to do that is, is by doing threat profiling. What it means is basically you inventory all the threats that are out there. Um, you you extract inf information from those threats and then make a decision, hey, this, this threat matter to me. Uh, if it doesn't matter, quick answer. I don't need to worry about this threat. But if it matters, then you probably need to do something about it, making sure that your defenses actually can do something about it. Um, and the last point here is that uh, technique, tactic, no, tactics, techniques, and procedures, uh, they evolve, but they don't evolve at the rapid pace of, of CVEs, for example. So uh, when I talk about CVEs, I'm talking about you know, the common uh, vulnerabilities that you see every day uh, coming out there. Like, this is like tens of thousands, uh, look, I don't even know what CVE number for this uh, already uh, we're at, but probably like 20,000 or something like that, right? So uh, every year we get a lot of different things, a lot of, it's hard to prioritize that, right? So it's like, uh, it's a losing battle. So uh, the focus here on, on the TTPs is basically, so we, we know the adversaries are going are gonna to get in, um, but we need to know, we need to understand how the adversaries are actually uh, behaving after they get in. So basically detecting and protecting against, against uh, the adversaries once they're in. So that's basically the whole point of uh, the, the pyramid of pain here. So on the bottom part, we have the traditional IOCs. I'm sure you all folks have probably seen this a bunch of times. So the hash values, so file, a file hash, um, it's a very simple but uh, ephemeral value. Basically, an adversary is going to deploy uh, software, and then that software will have a unique value. And then some, obviously, some, some vendors do a great job keeping track of that. Um, but adversaries are really good at like, changing their, their, their software, right? So they, they can just swip, swip, uh, like swap one byte, for example, uh, and make it, make it harder. Obviously, there's some, some more advanced things like using Yara rules to, to look at the file content instead of like file hash. Um, but th that, that's still something that adversaries are, are, are really good at changing. Uh, same goes with like IP addresses, domain names. So there's like infrastructure, what, what adversary is connecting from, et cetera. Adversaries are also really good at changing those. So, uh, you might be good at blocking, you know, IP addresses and domains, but they, they're also really good at like, just like quickly changing uh, or using really weird uh, command and control c channels as well. So it's really, really hard to, to be able to, you know, uh, just block those and, and say I kicked out the adversary. Um, you, we then, after we, we're getting closer to the behaviors now, so the, the network host artifacts, now it's like the adversaries are actually, you know, uh, in your network, they're, you're, they're leaving behind artifacts, um, but um, it's still not enough. And then uh, at the end, step, step up above, we have like the tools. So you're, you're trying to detect specific tools, um, but the same, the same goes like the adversaries are, are really good at uh, just like, you know, uh, just making changes to those tools, making them hard to detect. Um, and then, uh, then we finally get to the top of the pyramid with, with like the tactics, techniques, and procedures. Uh, and this, this is where basically the chokehold of where we, you get the most value out, out of defending adversaries because it makes, it's really hard for them to actually change these uh, te techniques and procedures. So if you detect at that level, basically it means that you're going to have, or uh, make it really hard for the adversary to do much uh, more because it's, it's really at the, the top level um, where that, the, the, that, that's what they're actually doing and then making or, or 
having the adversary change what you're doing, it's, it's much uh, harder. Or yeah, it's harder for the adversary to change that, but easier for the defend defenders to, to you know keep track of that as well because it's it's a limited amount of, of, of techniques. For example, right now it's 600 plus, um, and there's obviously a lot of procedure information there. So there's like there's there's variation in, inside of the techniques. So it's not it's not a lot of, all about like just you know detecting the technique once you're done. No, it's like you need to think about how the adversaries are using that technique, how they're variating uh, the different you know uh, tools that they're using, etc. Inside the specific technique. Uh, so breaking that down, basically we have the miter attack. Basically breaks down the behaviors by tactics. So how the adversaries uh, their goal. What what are they trying to do? So super, for example, persistence. That is a, a common you know. Um, tactic or, or adversary goal that the adversaries are doing. They want, they want to get into your environment and then just persist. Just in case you kick them out, they, they'll, they'll be in there. Um, another example is, um, so the, the going down, and now, now it's uh, on the technique level. So uh, how the adversaries are actually uh, achieving those goals. So uh, for example, so create the account. So they, they, they created an account to persist uh, in their environment, and they're just like, Sub techniques below that, so it's uh, even more detailed version of that technique. So, for example, they created a cloud, atta uh, cloud account, they created the domain account or a local account. So, basically, a framework does a good job explaining all those nuances uh, and breaking down the behaviors. Um, and then the, the, the finest grain level is a procedure, and then this is where the, the framework basically explains hey, this, uh, this group uh, achieved this uh, goal with this technique this way, like very specific. Uh, so it can be like a command, um, a command in, in a terminal, for example, like a Windows command shell or PowerShell command. Uh, um, it can be an API. So the the the, the actual app, the, the actual software is um, just call an API from the Windows operating system and then achieving the the, the goal by doing that. So they basically uh, they could create an account using a, a Windows API instead of using a command, uh, et cetera. So yeah, there's still different 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 levels of where you need to detect that. Um, so basically, this is uh, MITRE ATT&CK connecting all the dots. So you have the, um, the group's uh, campaign software. Basically, those are the, the, the threats that are actually implementing the procedures that are, are basically uh, executing the, the procedures to achieve their goals and techniques. Um, then they provide also data sources. So basically, that they describe how uh, you can use these like telemetry sources to detect those specific adversary behaviors. Um, and they also give you some examples with mitigation. So some more controls like, hey, like limit access to, to privileged accounts uh, when you can. So that basically reduces the attack surface of adversaries, making them harder to do, do uh, like privilege escalation type of things. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much MITRE ATT&CK, the classic MITRE ATT&CK um, matrix. That's people, how, how usually people recognize it is like a bunch of different things describe adversaries. Um, so super, super quickly, it's, it was cre created in 2013 because people didn't know actually how to defend against adversaries. Everyone's just banging their head against trying to just, I don't know, like detect hashes, right? It's really hard to do, uh, to keep track of all that. Um, so it, it also is uh, a part of being a great, great tool to you know, just describe what adversaries are doing. It's, it's also a really good tool to the commu communicate uh, a bunch of all different teams in your organization, right? So because yeah, you have a blue team, you have a red team, uh, you might have a purple team. You have like uh, you know the, the SOC manager, all that uh, level uh, up to CISO level. You can actually use this framework to describe what the adversary are doing. But you can say, hey, actually, I, I created this detection to, the, this, to, t uh, to detect this specific uh, procedure that maps to this specific you know technique and attack. So now it's like a really easy way to just communicate up and down the chain because like before that, it's just just uh, really really crazy and really hard to keep track of really uh, what adversaries were doing. Um, so now we enter the caveats of, of what matter attack is and what it isn't. So the biggest one is that it's, it's based off of like real world, world examples. So it's basically philosophy, it needs to be in the wild to be, so it needs to be open source in the wild reported for the uh, adversary uh, so technique and procedure to be uh, mapped to the, to the framework, right? So that's a big important thing to know is that not everything is in there. So you need to make sure that you're also keeping track of, you know, what's out there. Um, it might be a good tool, just uh, like keep uh, maybe like 80% of the solution, right? Uh, you, you understand 80% of what the adversary is doing, but like 20% might not be in there. So it's really important to just know that you, you need to also like evolve, like evolve your knowledge and, and also um, basically make it, your, make it your, your own. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's not a silver bullet. Um, you can 
try to detect 100% of uh, what the adversaries are doing there, and it's not going to be enough. And, uh, and anyways, it's not a good idea, really, because there's so much things in there that it's just a losing battle if you try to do that. You're going to waste your time. Um, so really, the goal of this is just focus on what you can focus on. Um, look at what your threats are could be, and look at what the techniques they're, they're actually using in the procedures and focus on detecting those, because that's going to be the most value that you're going to get from uh, using the, the, the knowledge base, basically. Uh, so let's jump into CTI, like using a CTI now uh, and inside of attack. Um, so I, this is a slide that I really like, basically. So prioritizing your threats, uh, threat profiling, basically you direct threats. That, that's, you're, you're the only one that knows who, who your th direct threats are. Uh, you're going to see telemetry in your environment. That's going to tell you, my, my, uh, you get some insights who this adversary might be, right? So uh, look at that telemetry, historical data, who has been targeting me. You might see some, you know, uh, just like where the domain uh, model comes into play, you can see what the adversaries are, uh, where they're coming from, the infrastructure. So you can start mapping, hey, I saw this IP, I saw this domain, might be this threat, might be not. Uh, but it could help you then answer questions, okay, this, this adversary is targeting me. Now, what, what can I do about it if they get in? So that's where MITRE ATT&CK helps you understand. It's like, if they get in, here's how they're doing, moving around your environment. Um, the second tier of threats are your peers. So your peers might have like, really good information as well. They, they might know adversaries are targeting them. So if you have a good way to communicate with your peers and say, hey, this, this, this uh, specific APT or this like, activist or wherever, it doesn't need to be like, you know, at the advanced, advanced persistent threat level. Um, but they can help you basically um, understand what are the potential threats out there that, that could be impacting you. So definitely keep that in mind. It's like if you have you know, colleagues around and other organizations, make sure you have that channel open. Um, it'll help you, you know, prioritize things like that, that they can help you with. So if they tell, hey, I saw this specific threat, it might be a good idea to just like, answer, answer, like ask yourself, I saw, they saw this threat, what would happen if they got in? Um, and lastly, so we, we go into the opportunistic. You might have like the classic thing is, so news reporting here, uh, but it could be another example. It might be like you have, you know, you have a vulnerability open uh, and you might be looking for, hey, what are like groups out there that are, act are actively exploiting this vulnerability? So now you can actually look at, um, so, you know, the opportunistic threat is like they're, they're, they might come in because you, you left the door open for them. So they might not be targeting you. They might just be targeting the entire, you know, inter internet out there and seeing what they can do. Um, so that's uh, some threat that you can uh, look at, for example. So now we're going to jump into the, the community edition. So basically this is, so MITRE ATT&CK, have, they have groups. Uh, and we also, we also provide groups free for the community because like I mentioned, like MITRE ATT&CK, they, uh, they don't they don't capture everything, and they also work on like a two year update cycle. So, uh, if news is out, like news of a, a threat, new threat is out there, uh, they, they might take like next to to a year to take to to um, to put it in in the framework. And and that's definitely not not like a a you know backstab matter tag. I love them. I used to to work for them. So it's basically just part of the 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 how they set up the framework. It's not uh, to be that. So we're trying to close that gap. Um, and we're also um, to help organizations that are like starting off and uh, they don't know much about like what, it, what is out there. We basically, we, we started like tagging groups with metadata. Uh, for example, we're, we're adding like groups motivation. So that can help you, for example, if you, ha if you have an organization and you, and you care about uh, groups that might be targeting, you know, uh, your, your, for example, ransomware, usually they're, they're, they're tied to, you're mo motivated by financial gain. Uh, so you, now you're gonna be able to filter and like go from see one, 145 groups in the knowledge base, you can like reduce that number and then just focus on uh, by, for example, motivation. Another one is suspect attribution. If you're worried about, um, you know, like Russian threats, you can like, filter by that and then it'll reduce the number. Uh, if, you're if you're worried about your sector, um, that this could be a way to filter down. For example, if you're like, uh, today we're gonna be focused on all agriculture, right? Cause like we're in corn con, so, um, you can use that as a way to basically filter, hey, what are my, my threats in the agricultural sector? Obviously, this, isn't, this doesn't cover all the threats, and, and there might be more, so uh, it's important to note, but it's still a good resource to, to filter that down as an exercise. Right? If you haven't done this before, this is a great starting point. Uh, and finally, observe countries. Uh, so they might, you might, I'm in the U.S., I want to know which groups are targeted in the U.S. Uh, so you can do that too. Uh, and then 
this is, okay, so we, this is an example now. We basically, I filter by financial gain, motivation, uh, agriculture, the sector, uh, and then the country, I, I did US. So one, from 145, we went down to three. And one of the groups is a lock, Lockbit, Ransomware, Actor, and, and Affiliates. Uh, we also have Fin7, Wizard Spider. Uh, all, those are really uh, good, like, uh, advanced uh, threats. So they definitely will have a lot of information out there that can help defend against those. Um, so there we go. Finally, we, we have a narrowed down list of, of threats. So that was a long way to get to here, but now, okay, now, now we, at least we know we, we have a starting point of threats to prioritize. Um, so yeah, thank, we finally got there. Uh, and now the good thing is like we can actually, so we can pivot now to the knowledge-based exploration. And we have this, the concept of the matrix. So in the minor attack, you can add that to the matrix. You see above, we, now you have like a working view of those threats in your label. Basically labels you can click around and then pivot into that knowledge. Um, you can filter, now we have a filter view of the matrix and basically each like bar, a color bar is like the techniques that that specific adversary is using. So for example, the green, we have Lockbit, uh, Fuchsia or Red, I can't tell really, it's Fin7 and then blue is Wizard Spider. Um, but what about software, right? So groups, they, they do specific techniques, but not all of the techniques. So let's, let's think about like adversary software. What, what, are, where, what are the tools that these uh, adversaries are using? So for example, we can go to Lockbit uh, as an example of that group. Uh, you can click on that label, it'll bring you to that, um, this page, so the, the group detail page. You're gonna have a lot of information that's gonna help describe what they're doing, um, their operations, um, related vulnerabilities too, if, you, if you're interested in that content. Um, but at the, at the end here, we have the techniques and software, so basically techniques are like the, the te techniques in, 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 in attack that they're doing. In this case, it's mapping to a CISA report, um, and then you can also like, go into the CISA report and like dive in specifically if you're interested in doing that. Um, and then we also include, and the matter attack also includes uh, the software. So this is basically the adversaries, the, the, the tools that they're using to employ all these techniques. So there's like a, for example, they're using 40. And that's a big, big number of, of, of software. And each software, they implement techniques as well. Uh, our procedures that imp basically to implement techniques. Um, so for example, we can dive into any of those software pages. In this case, we're gonna go into Lockbit 3.0 because that's basically we're focused on this ransomware uh, or like the ransomware group and they deploy this specific ransomware so we can dive into that. And again, you'll have the same kind of like use uh, technique, uh, how the that Lockbit employs uh, techniques in the, in the framework. Uh, so again, on bottom right, you have a way to add that to the matrix. Um, and then you basically rinse and repeat that across every time you want. Um, I think you can add up until like 40 different things in your matrix. Uh, and now we, we, we get to the point where like, hey, we, now we have basically, you know, techniques that we can focus on. And then by doing this like staggered approach of like adding a bunch of threats, uh, at the same time you, you get a sense of, hey, like now you, you got some, you know, that accounts now, ha now has like three labels inside of that. So it means that within all those threats that I added might be a good technique to prioritize. Think about like, how my defenses are, are doing in that specific technique, for example. So you can rinse and repeat that, for example, PowerShell, uh, Windows Command Shell for execution, that's for, like very common. Uh, adversaries love using uh, those to do other, the, the other techniques. Um, so for example, they use PowerShell to maybe do like registry run key. Uh, so basically for persistence, they're, like, they're adding a registry run key that every time um, maybe uh, the user logs in, it just deploys the tool. Uh, that's an example, very, very common. Um, or maybe they're doing a window service. Window service, like they, they run on a periodic uh, time, so maybe the adversaries are basically deploying a window service to run you know, every day to like, kick off their like, uh, command and control uh, tool. Um, now they, 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 they're, now there's also some overlap on disabling tools, so for example, if you have EDR, the, the adversary might, might target that and turn it off. So if you don't have it working in EDR, eh, chances are you're not gonna be able to see stuff afterwards. So you gotta make sure that you're actually, you know, detecting when they're turning off tools. <laughs> uh, so that's also really, really useful. Um, OSS memory, really common technique that adversaries, they, they do. If you're familiar with Mimikatz, that's bread and butter for Mimikatz, basically dumping OSS process memory, gathering credentials, and then basically getting from that um, hashes or, or even um, plain text passwords so they can use it 
do lateral movement, for example. Um, they can also do credential um, down, get credentials from web, web browsers. Your, your, your web browsers are not exempt from adversaries, so they can get into your web browser. They can, if you save your passwords for any, anything, your bank account, et cetera, your, your, your login password for one portal that you use for your uh, specific like, uh, work, then they can get it to it, right? So uh, things to, to, to think about, it's like basically the, the Maritag, once you look at it, it has a lot of cool things in there. Um, Continuing discovery, they might look at, um, for example, this is domain, domain accounts. They're looking on, on accounts. If you're in a Windows domain, uh, they might look at what are the Windows domains that I could use to pivot from, from, this, account, from this box to another one. Um, remote system discovery, et cetera. Like they're looking for other systems inside your environment. Um, another one, system information discovery. They might look for information inside the same box. Um, now, lateral movement, they might use RDP. Super simple RDP. Most organizations use, use RDP. You might have that open. They might just use you know, valid accounts uh, and to use RDP as a way to pivot to, to, to different box in your, in your environment. Um, they can also use SMB uh, shares, Windows admin shares, to move uh, and drop files laterally. Uh, so yeah, this, you see a lot of overlap on really important techniques. Uh, and then we also have command and control, the web protocols that you might use, use like standard HTTP to do their like, um, command and control traffic. And finally, we have data encrypted for impact, right? We, 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 we're, we know that because like, it's ransomware. So they're going to be, at the end of the day, encrypting your files. But that might be too late. <laughs> so I, I, after you, like, if, if you haven't detected it or protected something against that uh, on the left side, might be too late. So right, you, you, you might be able to detect that, but okay, you're, you're actually gonna detect that by look, logging into your computer and not being able to access it. So uh, it's, it's sort of like prioritizing where to de like detect. Uh, if you can detect earlier, obviously the better because it'll prevent people or adversaries from going to the right side, which is at the end the impact where uh, they might be doing some like really damaging stuff. They might be destroying your, your backups too. So um, yeah, keep that in mind. All right. So we uh, so the, the 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 platform has a way to basically also create technique sets. So basically customizing your knowledge. Now uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Navigator layers. This is basically like parody of that. Um, you can do a bunch of cool things here. You you can start adding information. For ex for example, I'm going to be adding all the techniques, uh, and then it, it has a notes uh, space, so you can add anything there. So if you're doing research. You can use this as a way to basically, like, you know, you can create techniques, technique set of all the techniques you care about, and then save it and, and share it with your colleagues. Um, and then this is how it will look like when we go back. Uh, now we have like a more filter view of the techniques we identified. Uh, it's much easier to work with. Not from 600, now we're we're looking at like uh, 12 or something like that. So it's definitely much easier to to work with. Um, there we go. Now we identify the techniques. Uh, we, from, from threats, we, we went down to the technique level, a little bit more manageable to do uh, something, as, ask a question uh, and answer something. So, uh, but we still need to figure out, okay, but all this is great, but we don't, still don't know how our defenses uh, lines up against those, those threats uh, and techniques. So now we're finally getting to the point where we're using defenses to, be actual, to actually do some good, right? So we want to use defenses to understand how, how are my defenses are protect, protecting me against the specific techniques. Um, and then we're, we're gonna be looking at, so basically we have this concept of product registry. We have a bunch of products uh, that we work with, like vendors we work with, and they publish this out for free for the community, for folks that were interested in understanding how their, or their tool works, or maybe they're a customer and they wanna know, hey, actually, what, how does my tool relate back to, to, uh, to MITRE ATT&CK? So there's tons of really, really good information out there uh, uh, um, in the product registry. Uh, many are, are, are open source. Many include like actual like detection logic. So for example, Elastic, uh, Elastic they publish out like I think like 700 detection rules uh, with the detection logic that you can actually use, copy, and then like basically implement it into your, your own like sim or, or whatever you use. Um, so basically, we we describe the products via capabilities, and so the logs are basically the telemetry. So the data sources in attack basically map that, those are two logs. Here's basically the visibility that you would get from um, that specific capability. Detect this now, like that specific uh, telemetry now is actually being, you know, detected as malicious. So <clears throat> that's now a, a different 
type of, of categories that would detect. So protect is the detection actually detected the, the, the event or the suspicious activity and it protected against that. So it's actually doing something for you automatically. Uh, mitigate is more towards the, similar to attack mitigations, it's actually prevent, like putting uh, controls in place that would prevent the adversaries from, from doing that activity in the first place. Uh, respond, it might be like a protection, but it's actually rolling back the activity. So maybe they, they copy the file, it's like, no, actually I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and delete that file because I don't like it. So that, now it's like a respond. It's actually uh, doing something uh, automated or could be manual too. It might be like a respond playbook um, as well. And then finally we have tests. So just like uh, Atomic Red Team for example, though, though th that, that framework has a lot of good information, uh, a lot of good tests for free that you can definitely use as a way to basically d test for a specific technique uh, or procedure. Uh, so for example, Sysman Modular is an example of uh, a tool that, w that, that Olaf Hartung, uh, he published out and basically has a lot of good information on how to use Sysmon uh, and actually in a detection uh, method uh, and then they breaks it down in into like te telemetry and detections. Uh, and then on the testing side, we, we include like the Atomic Red Team. Uh, but for example, we have uh, like other, other, other tools like Scythe, uh, um, Attack IQ, for example, with, like if you're a customer of those, you can actually use that as a way to understand how they're actually um, creating tests. Uh, and when we, we finally pull it all together, we basically on the top side, we, ha we, we have the threats. Uh, on the bottom side, we have the defenses. Uh, and then basically that'll help you understand what are my gaps, uh, what are my defensive capabilities, uh, what are the available tests that I care about. Um, so now we're, we're gonna go, so now actually let's put this all in, into play. Into play. Um, defensive gaps, is my, my favorite uh, example is super simple. Uh, basically, you identify your threats, you identify the behaviors, aka the techniques, procedures, um, and then you identify your defenses that are also mapped to the, to the behaviors. So that'll help you find the gaps. What, what, where don't I have visibility, basically? Uh, or where, where do I have visibility, but where do I, don't I have a detection or protection capability? Um, basically, super simple uh, question that you can ask yourself and find uh, really good information. Uh, so for example, we're gonna go in and use the search, and we're gonna add the system modular that I that I talked about. And now it's basically the the in the uh, red or fuchsia. Now it's basically overlapping. So the the blue cells are what we had before. So the techniques we care about, uh, and then and the and the and the the rest is basically what's not part of the the techniques. But when there is you know some overlap here, means that the the technique and the and the in the product, defensive product, there's an overlap there. Um, so for example, here, we identify a gap credential uh, from web browsers. There's the, the, the defense that I brought in doesn't have any detection and telemetry uh, information. So there you go, you find a gap, super simple. Um, and, and there's ex extremely valuable, right? Because uh, you, if you wanna be able to detect that, you first need to be able to know if you have visibility. So now you understand, hey, I'm missing this. Um, so th this is where you can actually go into the technique cell and click on it and then you, you'll find all, all, all the other products that are in there and that's gonna help you basically, uh, from those products you can get ideas. For example, I mentioned Elastic earlier, you can use Elastic as a way to maybe copy their detection over if you, if you can. Um, so use the knowledge out there. There's a lot of good information out there um, that you can use for. But not, not only that, analytics. So there's also, I don't know if you're familiar with Sigma, so for Sigma Analytic is a free uh, open source repo repository that basically they describe also um, their detection ideas with attack. So we can use that information to correlate that back. Um, and then in the same card here, you see 22 analytics, basically means there are, like, there are seven, 72 detection ideas that you can potentially use to uh, detect uh, that specific use case of the adversary. Um, so obviously, uh, I would recommend you to dive into the, the specific you know, implementation of the adversary, what they're doing, go back then to Sigma, uh, to that to that specific analytic, um, and then get get a match. To see, hey, this act, this detection actually might be good, or maybe man, not, not that much. So I'm not gonna use it for now. Um, so this is an example for LSAS. So uh, the first sigma, they're actually they they dump the, the, all the rule logic that you can use to implement it in your system. So it's really really good information that's out there for free. Not not many people uh, 
realize it's out there for free, so definitely want to make sure that you're all aware of that. So Sigma, definitely a good resource uh, that maps to, to attack. They do a really good job mapping to attack. Um, uh, and then for the folks are, who are not really thinking about attack that much, uh, we also have a way to basically filter down. So you can do, for example, if you're like more into process names, you can use, for example, you can search uh, filter only for analytics and filter for LSAS, LSAS .exe, and then you'll get a list of you know, rules that you can use for that specific process. So if you see something malicious, feel free to pop it in there and you might get some like, good ideas to see uh, how adversaries are using it. So uh, definitely recommend that. Same with the capabilities, pretty much the same thing. Um, and the final uh, topic here for, for testing, um, you can use the same, so you can bring in the, a test uh, product and then you can find you know, where, where, wh how that specific test or, or like product can help you test against a specific technique. So in this case, I'm bringing in uh, for, for registry run keys, I identified I had the, 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 the technique I care about is a, is a defense I have supposedly, right, um, with, with, with system on, um, modular, but I actually want to test my assumption and I'm going to bring in invoke atomic, uh, so like a quick, simple atomic test. Um, to see uh, if I have some, you know, if that detection is actually working. So you can now pivot from, from the technique, um, use, use Invoke Atomic uh, over here, basically it's filtering down the capabilities by that specific technique, and hey, you have 17 tests that you can use for that specific um, of technique. So that's already like really easy to find and very valuable, uh, saving time. Um, just you identify a technique you care about, you want to test it, here, here's, here's how exactly you, you can use uh, uh, testing, like free, free test uh, product to, to test against that. Um, yeah, 17 capabilities, as I mentioned. Um, finally, last thing I wanted to, to cover is basically expanding your knowledge base. Uh, in this case, we're looking at Wizard Spider. Uh, like I mentioned, you need to like think about outside of MITRE attack. So obviously, the first thing you're going to do is use Google. <laughs> um, so I basically recommend like Google Dorking is really really powerful. Uh, so Wizard Spider, th that name comes from CrowdStrike. So obviously I wanna, I wanna go with directly to the source. So I'm basically using Wizard Spider uh, in quotes and I'm using Google Dork's uh, ability to basically cite uh, colon CrowdStrike.com and that's gonna basically, it's gonna say, hey, um, fetch me all the CrowdStrike sites that mention Wizard Spider. Uh, and then after like doing some digging uh, and finding, uh, researching the adversary, Basically, I stumble on, on, on this report that they mentioned, which is Spider. Um, obviously, by this point, I, I got you familiar with the techniques that they, they have and what they don't have, and identified a really common a technique, uh, sign binary. I think it's, they renamed that the system binary proxy execution, uh, run DLL32. So, obviously, it's used this very common technique, or basically uh, living off the land binary to proxy execution of malicious stuff. So, um, as I see, Wizard Spider was mentioned using that. Um, but we don't, uh, this is basically a defense evasion technique, but we didn't have that in the knowledge. So what we do is now you have the ability to basically copy that uh, research spider and make it your own. So basically you, you do duplicate that. And what that'll do is basically create a technique set from, from the wizard spider uh, group. And basically it'll help you create a, a back, a, 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 a label that will just be basically be the same thing as the original. But now, as we obviously notice, it's missing that technique. So now you can actually go in into that technique set and then you can add techniques to that. So you, what you'll do here is basically go in, add the technique, run DLL, and then you can also in the notes, just like add a note, hey, I found this uh, here. So that, that's basically very really useful when you're trying to communicate uh, to, to your peers. It's like, hey, I, I did some digging into this thread I care about. Uh, it's actually missing information in attack. Um, I added, added more information. Can you check if, I, if, I, if we have like detection uh, for this new technique, for example? Um, so really useful. Uh, and now we can go back. You'll see run DLL is part of the new, uh, part of your, your new uh, technique set, basically you, the group. Um, so yeah, that's basically all, all I had in terms of, you know, help, helping you fo folks identify threats you, you might care about, um, defenses you might have, and, and actually how they, they map back to, to the threats, uh, and, and also the test. Uh, that's also important, so making sure you, you, you folks like all, are also testing what you have, that's really important. 
uh, and then finally, you know, making sure that you also understand that you need to like think about um, what what might be missing, so you can do that. Definitely, you can do that research, uh, and it's all available for free. Um, so that's that's pretty much all I have. I appreciate that, and if you have any questions, definitely I'm I'm here all day, or I'm here right now. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, for sure. So my title is Lead Adversary Emulation Engineer. So basically what that means is that I, I, I know how to uh, basically emulate the adversaries. So adversaries, right, they, they write software. They, they're software, software engineers, software developers, but they, they, they write software for malicious purposes, right? So basically my job uh, is to like understand what they do, copy their, their software in a way that wouldn't be malicious, but it hits on the maliciousness of like emulating the behaviors but obviously, I'm not gonna go in and just break your 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 entire network. I'm just gonna go in and and emulate those the, those behaviors. So basically, that's what all it is is, is writing software, uh, emulating the the behaviors that the adversaries are doing. Um, yeah, thanks thanks for the for, for the question. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for basically right now, uh, we're doing so some some collection from the open source for the community edition. Um, for for the enterprise edition, that's a different story. Like we we definitely have like ways to to co like connect to anything from the CTI source uh, back to your your knowledge base. Yeah, absolutely. So we support six, for example. Um, but basically, we, we have a, a good way to collecting that data in any format, normalizing it to, into our format. So uh, we, we have a good stru structure and pipeline to do that that doesn't involve much, um, you know, we, we really don't care about the format as long as we can formalize it. Um, so yeah, it can be anything. We, we work from Excel. We have folks like sending us Excel sheets, <laughs> and we convert that into that. So. Any any other questions? All right, so awesome. Thank you so much.